click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's session we are going to study about a zeolite permutite process. This is a process or a method which converts hard water into soft water. Not only temporary hard water but also permanent hard water can be converted into soft water by this process. Let us see in this session in detail how exactly this process works. What all are the different reactions? What is a zeolite or a permutite? So in this session we are going to study in detail about this zeolite permutite process. <music> Zeolite or permutite process. Over here, we'll use zeolites or which are also known as permutites. So, zeolites or permutites are chemical compounds. Those chemical compounds are the same. They're just named differently. We can also name it as zeolite or we can name it as permutite. The name zeolite, the green meaning of it is zine, that is boiling. And lithos is stone, means boiling stone. The chemical formula of sodium zeolite may be represented as Na2O.Al2O3.XSiO2 into YH2O where X can be any number from 2 to 10 and Y can be any number from 2 to 6. Now what exactly this is? This entire thing can be named as zeolite or this entire thing can be named as permutite. Now why do I have XSiO2 into YH2O? Because this zeolite is added into my impure water in some form and this entire zeolite will start reacting with all the impurities which are present in the water and it will make all the soluble impurities into insoluble impurities which can be easily filtered out and making the hard water into soft water that means impure water into pure water why do i have x and y over here because x and y are variable that means depending upon the amount of water i have depending upon the amount of impurities which are present in the water i will replace the value values of x and y so depending upon the impurities the x values can be 2 to 10 or the y values can be 2 to 6 but it should not exceed 10 or exceed 6 why because if this x value exceeds 10 or this y value exceeds 6 this entire formula won't be a zeolite anymore this chemical formula will not represent a zeolite or a permutite zeolite is hydrated sodium aluminosilicate zeolite is also known the other name of it or the chemical name of it is hydrated sodium aluminosilicate Okay. Let us see the definition of it. Zeolite is hydrated sodium aluminosilicate. We understood this hydrated sodium aluminosilicate and why it is named so. Capable of exchanging reversibly the sodium ions for hardness producing ions in water. That means they will give away the sodium ions and take away something from the impurities which are present in water which are actually factorizing or are affecting in producing the hardness in the water. That means they will give away the sodium ions that is their Na ions in exchange with the impurities which contain some ions which produce hardness in the water. That means they give away sodium and take away something from the impurity making sure that that soluble impurity will then get converted into insoluble impurity. Zeolites are also known as permutites. So that is permutites is just another name of a zeolite. Zeolites are of two types, natural zeolites and synthetic zeolites. Natural zeolites, they are amorphous and non-porous. They are derived from green sands by washing, heating and treating with NaOH. The natural zeolites are more durable. Now at times, these natural zeolites are present in the water forms in the form of green sands. And these are more durable than the derived or synthetic zeolites. From the natural zeolites by looking at their properties the man-made zeolites are being made which are also known as artificial zeolites or synthetic zeolites which are used for mass conversion of hard water into soft water they are porous and possess gel structure they are prepared by heating together the first thing is china clay feldspar and soda ash and granulating the resultant mass after cooling second thing that happens is solution of sodium silicate aluminum sulfate and sodium aluminate third is solution of sodium silicate and aluminum sulfate fourth is solution of sodium silicate and sodium aluminate now when all of these that is a b c and d are mixed together and then granulated we get something known as synthetic zeolites synthetic zeolites have higher exchange capacity per unit way so the synthetic zeolites are made in such a way that they will perform better than my natural zeolites but my natural zeolites are more durable than the synthetic zeolites principle of zeolites
zeolite permutite process. When hard water is passed over a bed of sodium zeolite, Ca2 plus and Mg2 plus ions present in it are taken up by the zeolite, simultaneously releasing equivalent Na plus ions in exchange for them. Now we need to understand that hardness of water is due to carbonates or bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium. That means it will have Ca plus ions and Mg plus ions present in it. The impurities will have ions of calcium and magnesium. To get these impurities, to get the ions of the impurities, we put in our zeolite. Our zeolite will give away the sodium ion and in exchange will take the ions of calcium and magnesium. So it's a give and take process. That is the reason why it is known as an exchange process. Exchanging my sodium ions for the calcium ions or the magnesium ions is nothing but my zeolite permitted process and that is the exact principle of it. Exchanging the ions which are already present in the zeolite with the ions which are already present in the impurity. The water gets free from hardness causing cations and sodium salts are released which remain in water. When zeolite gets exchanged, it is regenerated and can be used again for softening of water. Now as I said that the zeolite will give away its sodium ion and in place, in exchange, it will take either calcium ion or magnesium ion. Now I'll show you the reactions of a zeolite, how the Na plus ions gives away its Na ions and in return it takes the ions of calcium and magnesium and forms impurities which are insoluble in water and then can be easily filtered out or can be removed by mere heating of water. The actions taking place during the softening process are the first is CaCl2 plus Na2Zd. Now this Zd stands for my zeolite. The zeolite is again the entire structure which I showed you. That entire structure cannot be written in all the reactions and that is the reason why we are allowed and permitted to write only Ze. Ze stands for a zeolite. So CaCl2 plus Na2Ze forming CaZd plus 2 NaCl. What is happening over here is this Cl2 is going for this place of Z and this Z is coming in the place of Cl2. What is this? This is a double displacement reaction. Over here this Z is getting displaced by Cl2 and this Cl2 is getting displaced by Z. So in my reactant side I have CaCl2 which now forms CaZe and Na2 will form Cl2, a bond with Cl2 forming Na2Cl2. Na2Cl2 can also be written as 2NaCl. Let us see the balancing of this reaction. I have one calcium on the reactant side, one calcium on the product side, twice chlorine on the reactant side, 2Cl on the product side. I have Na2 on the reactant side, 2Na on the product side. 1 zeolite on the reactant side, 1 zeolite on the product side. So we are what is happening? Ion exchange is happening. This zeolite is exchanging its Na ions with the Ca ions. So instead of Na2Ze, now we have CaZe. And then instead of Na2Ze, now we will have 2 NaCl. The next reaction is with CaSO4 plus Na2Ze forming CaZe plus Na2SO4. Let us see what is happening over here. Again, I have a sodium zeolite over here which will displace or which will exchange its Na2 ions for Ca ions. So now this zeolite which was attached with my sodium ions is now attached with my calcium ions on the product side. And this Na will form a bond with SO4 forming Na2SO4. Let us see the balancing of this reaction as well. We have CaSO4. 4 plus Na2Z on my reactant side that means I have one calcium on my reactant side on my entire product side also I have one calcium now S that is sulfur on the reactant side is one sulfur on the product side is also one number of oxygens on my reactant side is O4 number of oxygens on my product side is also O4 plus Na2Z number of sodium is Na2 over here also it is Na2 I have one zeolite on my reactant side one zeolite on the product side the next I have MgCl2 plus Na2Z forming MgZ plus 2 NaCl. So here I have MgCl2 that is 1 Mg on my entire reactant side and 1 Mg on the entire product side. The number of chlorine over here is Cl2 that is twice over here is also twice because it's 2 NaCl plus Na2 2 Na on the product side, 1 zeolite on the reactant side, 1 zeolite on the product side. Over here also the same thing has happened. The Ze has double displaced Cl2. If we can see the first reaction and the third reaction are almost similar. They are very same. Only the difference is instead of Ca over here, I have Mg over here. The same thing is with the second reaction and the fourth reaction over here I have CaSO4 plus Na2Z. Over here I have MgSO4 plus Na2Z. These are also the same reactions. Only instead of Ca over here I have Mg over here. 
let's just look at the balancing of the reaction MgSO4 plus Na2Ze forming MgZe plus Na2SO4. So Mg is 1 on the entire reactant side, Mg is 1 on the entire product side. Then I have SO4, SO4, 1SO4 and 1SO4, Na2, Na2 and zeolite and zeolite. So first and third are similar reactions, second and fourth are similar reactions and all these reactions are completely balanced. Let's move ahead to the fifth reaction that is Mg HCO3 twice plus Na2Ze forming MgZe plus 2 NaHCO3. What is happening over here is this Ze is taking the place of HCO3 twice. This entire HCO3 twice is being replaced by my zeolite. So instead of Mg HCO3 twice on my reactant side, I have MgZe on the product side. So what happens to my HCO3 twice? The HCO3 is as it is it is twice over here gets reacted or gets substituted and joined with Na2. I have Na2, I have HCO3 which is 2 forms 2 NaHCO3. So this is again one of the balanced reactions. If you want we can check the balancing of it. We have 1 Mg on the reactant side, 1 Mg on the product side, 1 zeolite on the reactant side, 1 zeolite on the product side. HCO3 is twice on the reactant side. Na is also twice on the reactant side and that is the reason why they combined to together forming NaHCO3 and the entire is twice. Similarly we have for calcium for the fifth and the sixth reaction both the reactions are exactly similar or exactly same to each other the only difference is over here I have Mg over here I have Ca so over here I'll have Mg and over here I'll have Ca. CaHCO3 twice plus Na2Ze forming CaZe plus twice NaHCO3. So over here HCO3 is twice, Na2 is also twice, so this twice and twice will form twice NaHCO3 and this Ca will get substituted with Ze forming CaZe my calcium zeolite. Again this is a proper balanced reaction. Let us see the other reactions which happen with the zeolite permitted process that is iron and manganese present in small amounts or quantities are also removed as follows. So over here I have FeHCO3 twice. Over here till now we saw all the reactions with calcium and magnesium but over here we are going to see the reactions with iron and manganese. Now there is a difference between magnesium and manganese and it's very important for us to remember magnesium is Mg manganese is Mn and over here we are going to see with manganese and that is the reason why I have written Mn. FeHCO3 twice plus Na2Ze. What is my Na2Ze? The normal sodium zeolite forms FeZe plus twice NaHCO3. Let us look at the balancing of these reactions. Over here it's a double displacement reaction or a double substitution reaction wherein the zeolite goes and attaches itself with Fe forming FeZe and this HCO3 twice gets attached with Na2 forming Na2HCO3 twice. Na2HCO3 twice can also be written as NaHCO3 and the entire thing as twice and that's how it has been written. Let us see the balancing of it. I have one Fe in the entire reactant side, one Fe in the entire product side. HCO3 is twice. So why are also HCO3 is twice. Na is twice, Na is twice and I have one zeolite on the reactant side, one zeolite on the product side. Let us see the next reaction with manganese. I have manganese with HCO3 twice. This is nothing but my manganese bicarbonate plus Na2Ze sodium zeolite forming MnZe that is manganese zeolite plus twice of NaHCO3. Again this is the same reaction as the previous one. The only difference is over here I had Fe over here forming my Fe zeolite that is my iron zeolite over here I have manganese over here forming my manganese zeolite. Let us see what exactly happens over here is my again double substitution reaction or double displacement reaction wherein this zeolite goes and attaches itself to manganese and this HCO3 twice goes and attaches itself to Na2 forming twice of NaHCO3 and this will form my manganese zeolite. The balancing of this reaction is manganese is one on the entire reactant side manganese is one on the entire product side then I have HCO3 twice on the reactant again HCO3 and twice on the product side Na is twice Na is twice on the product side as well and I have one zeolite on the reactant side forming one zeolite on the product side as well. Regeneration of zeolite permutite bed now what exactly is regeneration of zeolite permutite bed this zeolite is giving away all its Na plus ions and taking Ca plus Mg plus or ferrous or manganese for that matter.
and forms impurities which are insoluble in water that means all the na plus ions are going away and it itself is forming insoluble impurities now if the na plus ions are going away that means the amount of zeolite added into the water is getting finished off and that is the reason why it is very important to regenerate that and get the na plus ions back so that when we start off with a fresh batch of hard water and convert it into soft water then the zeolite can be useful if we do not do regeneration of zeolites then the, in the next batch of water or the next process of converting the hard water into soft water it won't react at all and the hard water will remain hard water and that is the reason why regeneration of the zeolite permitite bed is one of the most important processes in the zeolite permitite process let us see how exactly it happens when zeolite is completely converted into calcium and magnesium zeolites it ceases to soften water that is it gets exhausted it is regenerated by treating with 10% of brine solution. Let us see the exact reaction of it. So we have CaZe plus 2 NaCl. So over here we see on the reactant side we are not having sodium zeolite because this is the process of preparation of sodium zeolite. So we have taken calcium zeolite plus 2 NaCl. 2 NaCl is nothing but my normal sodium chloride forming Na2Ze plus CaCl2. In the same way we can do it with MgZe also. MgZe plus 2 NaCl forming Na2Ze plus MgCl2. Let us see how exactly this reaction works. For the first one we have CaZe. So what happens over here this 2Na takes place of my Ca over here. So now this 2Na will get attached to my zeolite forming Na2Ze and Na2Ze is my sodium zeolite and now whatever is remaining over here that is my Ca is remaining over here and this twice of Cl is remaining over here it will form CaCl2. Let us see the balancing of this equation. We have Ca that is one calcium on the reactant side, one calcium on the product side, one zeolite on the reactant side, one zeolite on the product side, 2 Na, Na2 and 2 Cl forming Cl2. This is a completely balanced reaction. We have a very similar reaction over here but instead of CaZe we use MgZe plus twice NaCl forming Na2Ze plus MgCl2. This Na2Ze is nothing but my regenerated zeolite. This MgZe is nothing but my exhausted zeolite. This is again the exactly similar equation to the previous one. The only difference over here is instead of Ca we have Mg and over here also instead of CaCl2 we have MgCl2. So my magnesium zeolite plus twice NaCl this Na2 will go and get attached itself to Ze forming Na2Ze plus MgCl2 because this Mg will now get reacted with this twice of Cl forming MgCl2. The washing containing CaCl2 and MgCl2 are led to drain and regenerated zeolite bed thus obtained is reused for softening the hard water. So by here in today's video we studied the zeolite permutite process. We studied how the zeolites give away the sodium ions to calcium, magnesium and even iron and manganese to form their soluble impurities into insoluble impurities and convert hard water into soft water. We also studied about the regeneration of the zeolite permutite bed and how can we convert the exhausted zeolites into the the regenerated zeolites. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.